opening match in round 18 is about to unfold in front of a massive crowd at Newcastle's Marathon Stadium as the Knights go out. It's a night of survival for them. They struggle to make the five. There's their team for tonight. And Canberra, of course, they want to make the top three. Oh, Davis, Barnes, Ainsco, Wire, Godden, the Johns brothers, Sergeant McCormick, Harrigan, Butterfield, Muir, and Glanville, the coaches, David Waite. Around 25, 26,000, I would imagine. A sprinkling of Raiders um, paraphernalia out there. Did I say a sprinkling? 20 of them. And here they come. Led out by the all-time great Mal Meninga. The forwards lay the foundation, I think he said in the press this week. The backs can win this competition. And there's the team for tonight, Brett Mullen. Seven tries he scored in the last two weeks. Full of eye on the wing with Mandruku, Meninga, Wiki, the centres, Crocus, Stewart, the halves, Pongi and Lomax, the prop, Steve Walters between them, Hetherington, Ferner and Clyde at the back of the scrum, Tim Sheens as the coach. Graham Annesley is the referee in charge of this one with Canberra in the first half running from left to right and a low kick off deep into the corner. O Davis is the first man to bring it back. So the first tackle of the game, fairly timid as Barnes goes away, runs into Lomax, slams him into the ground with Walters underneath. Harrigan wants it, he takes it. Pongi meets him, Hetherington swarms over the top. And his second row partner, Ferner, got a taste of it as well. Glanville works it across now. They're 38 metres out from their own line. The first set of six. Adam Muir now. This is the last, the kick. Andrew Johns keeps it low. Not a, not a deep kick. In fact, Canberra have come up with the ball in good field position, indicating they put good charge down pressure on the kicker. Played by Nandruku, who wobbles away from the play the ball. Fulavai comes off the left wing to take a 5-8 play. Halfway line just in front of them now as they cross it. Clyde wrestles with Matthew Johns, and the smaller Matthew Johns wins the day. Canberra with their first opportunity to attack. Walters looks for his captain. Meninga takes it down to the 30-metre line. Nandruku across now for Stewart. Turns it inside, that's Lomax. And they're right on the 30-metre point. Newcastle beaten at their last two outings uh, to Souths and Wests following their brilliant win against Brisbane. The kick through, rolls inside the 20-metre line. Oh, Davis was very alert. Good play by him as Hetherington puts him away with Croker. Been one of their real form players over the last couple of months, Robbie O. Davis. Good positional play there. Important Newcastle get away to a good start. In the last three games, the opposition have scored first points. It might be a ploy that Canberra continue to use, putting the ball in behind the defensive line just to put them in two minds. Butterfield over the halfway mark. Tony Butterfield in the run on side. Darren Tracy relegated to the bench as McCormack looks for Harrigan. Harrigan comes storming onto it. And the Novocastrian crowd goes up. McCormack now works it right. A dummy inside by Andrew Johns. He kicks outside. Russell Wire is offside out there. The ball is taken by Newcastle. About 11 metres out from the Canberra line. And the tactic we see employed so often in the game these days, the cross kick for the wingers. No doubt Wire was in front of the kicker. Could have been penalised. Godden there pushed over the sideline. Canberra's ball through David Ferner. Good defence run on there from Sargent. Walters. This is Quentin Pong here. Puts a step into his work and beats Adam Muir. Pulled down by McCormick with Harrigan over the top cleaning up. Now Lomax off a short run is able to make very good yardage. Got a pass out the back. I don't know that that was necessary. He's gone back with the pass as far as he travelled and then Hetherington was on the end of a beauty from Harrigan. Walters away to the left for Stewart to put on the boot. And down goes Robbie O'Davis inside his 10-metre line. Back on his goal line. Now he starts the uh, the progress. Fulavai takes him with Ruben Wicke. Fulavai has come out of that slightly injured. Played over there by Brad Godden. Newcastle, though, beaten at their last two outings. They haven't made... Any significant team changes, even though their reserve grade side is doing very well. Sergeant! 
And Newcastle to go well. Sargent has to go well. McCormack with a dummy and then a gain of about 18 metres. Good work by McCormack. Last tackle now. 30 metres out from the Canberra line. From Muir across for Andrew Johns to kick. And the clean-up work is required. The bounce will tell the story. But Stewart is back there. And he's been grounded in the field of play, says referee Graham Annesley. Well, Ricky Stewart was predominantly in, in goal. Mullins, Mullins is through, through and away. Play. Oh, Mullins. He's away. They will not catch him. He scored 13 tries for the year. And this is his 14th. Brett Mullins. One of the finds of the year. And look at the face. Well, he's right at the top of his form, Brett Mullins. Everything he does in the last couple of weeks has come up trumps. And this has come from absolutely nothing. He has gone the length of the field. You see there that there was actually a shepherd provided by one of his players. That will prove very interesting from another angle. But what a running style. One of the great athletes of the game. And once he was into open spaces, there was never a chance of being run down. Well, the player that Peter's referring to from the Canberra side is the number eight, Quentin Pongia. And a head-on shot would be interesting to see. Brett Mullins, what a year it's been for him. David Ferner then. From right in front, he adds the extras. Daly and Sheens are happy, so are the Canberra fans. The team leads 6-0 after only five minutes. Russell Wire now, 35 out from the Raiders line. And Harrigan working close to the play the ball. He got a smack across the jaw, an arm flying around a touch high. Muir now is inside the 20-metre line. Newcastle down 6-0. Can they strike back? Ainsco puts it in behind them. Barnes! No, I don't think so. Touch judge agrees. And Annesley takes them back out to the 20-metre line. Well, a close call this one. Jamie Ainsco threading the needle there. Barnes has got good speed. Good decision there. No way that was a try. Will result in a 20-metre tap for the Canberra side. But again, the short kick proving dangerous. Well, I'm not so sure that he's given the right ruling there. I got the impression that the ball was deflected over the touch in goal by a Canberra arm. Now, that being the case, it should have been a line dropout. That's another incident we might... Well, here it is again. Watch it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm right. That ball looked to be pushed out by the Canberra hand, and that should have been a line dropout. A penalty has gone to the Raiders now. So, if Lady Luck is smiling, she's smiling on Canberra. Little question mark on was there an obstruction in the try offered by Quentin Pong here. Another suggestion is that Ricky Stewart was actually grounded on his own goal line. And now Steve Walters is working about uh, 25 metres out from the line. Stewart back for Ferner. Ferner is put away by Harrigan. Danger for Newcastle now. This is Quentin Pongia. Centre of the ground. Mal Meninga finds himself a dummy high. Clyde offers his services. Meninga flicks it out the back. Steve Walters... He's thinking about going himself. He puts it on the ground. Meninga falls on it. They're 20 metres out. No gaining ground. Sloppy play by Canberra, really. Play back to Walters. Away for Stewart. He switches the point of the attack from right to left. Broker works now with Pong. With Ruben Wickey. Ruben Wickey. He puts it down. Canberra gets their second try. Well, they have paid dearly the Newcastle side. If it was Noah Nandruku who touched the football at the far end of the field, a penalty gave them another set of six. The switch of play here, they love running angles, Canberra. That's Ruben Wickey. It's just a simple missed tackle there. Robbie McCormack and the number 12, Adam Muir, both missed. And a good change of direction there at the end there from Wickey to beat Robbie O. Davis. Big strength there from the centre three-quarter from Canberra. Should get this from 20 out. Similar margin in from the Hill crowd. And there it is. A perfect kick from David Ferner. 12-0 in favour of the Raiders. 13 minutes gone. Ainsco. Now Sargent. And Ruku trailing around the legs. Sargent played great football against Brisbane. And left us with no doubts that for Newcastle to do well, Sargent has to do well. They come to the blind for Matthew Johns, and he keeps it low. Mandruku hung the hand out at it, and uh, that's probably why he was pretty 
pretty keen to go back and recover. Now Mullins opens up again. Oh, look at him go. He beats O Davis on the outside. And away he goes again. Brett Mullins scores his second 90-metre try. How good is this bloke? Unbelievable. <laughs> well, we've seen references over the last two weeks of the Langlands, the Les Johnses. I thought it was a bit premature to put those sort of titles on Brett Mullins, and I still think that that is the case. But while we continue to see running of the football like this, there's every right to talk about him in glowing terms. Nice confidence from Nandruku. Now, if you chase the kick in staggered fashion, look at the gap up the middle there. You're going to pay the penalty. And Brett Mullins, one-on-one, -on -one is always going to prevail. Give a wrap here to Mark Lanville. He knows that he's no chance. He does his best to keep Mullins away from the posts. That's a tough job to do. Mullins, well, he's just in vintage form. What about having a look at this if you're a fullback? What about the confidence here? He comes to O Davis and says, OK, I'll give you a little bit of an in and away, and he beats him on the outside. That's one of his great qualities. I mean, he's got enormous speed, which is, is enough to beat most players, but he has got very sharp and very deliberate footwork and can go either way. Uh, I mean, he's a player with all the skills. Newcastle, when you're playing a side that's got a very good back line, you've also got to keep them busy in defence. And Newcastle put no pressure on the on the Canberra backs in defence. They're standing out there fresh as daisies. And every time they receive the ball, those types of runs and, and quick turnover uh, spreads are possible. Uh, Newcastle very, very negative, and that's leading to their own demise. David Ferner then adds his third goal to what is becoming already an embarrassing total. 18 points to nil, and we've only had 17 minutes, and Brett Mullins has scored two superb tries. Newcastle working from inside their own 20-metre point. Nathan Barnes. And the penalty goes now to Newcastle. Brings a roar of delight from the crowd. So we watch it on replay, and they... They didn't get back behind Annesley. You can't blame him for pinching them. A comment on the sideline from Steve Roach. Yeah, I think the crowd had something to do with that. They were jeering for the last couple of plays to get Canberra back on side. We'll just have a look here as Newcastle take the tap. You can see there the defensive line of Canberra, how they only cover half the field. That's Fulavai, the far winger, just over the midsection of the field. What that's trying to do is encourage Newcastle to go wide means that the Canberra players must slide and also means that they must be very good in going across on the inside or they'll get caught. They work this defence very, very well. This is Adam Muir now. 21 metres out, right in the centre of the park. Matthew Johns and now Tony Butterfield. Butterfield is 15 metres out from the line. To the left comes Newcastle, though they're fairly flat in attack. Harrigan angles back towards the play the ball. 12 metres out on tackle five. McCormick works a wide blindside. Matthew Johns looks for his brother. His brother, will he get it down? No, he's over the dead ball line. Gee, they've got great understanding between them, these two kids, though. You can see here Matthew Johns trying to open something up. He saw Andrew, his brother, back inside. The kick just a little bit too heavy. And unfortunately for the Knights, it was... Andrew Johns, who touched the football last, so back out to the 20 metre line. 18 nil after 22 minutes. Well, that's an obvious thing to say, but there's no doubt Newcastle have to be the next ones on board. They're going to stay competitive in this match. John Lomax has tackled. That's what's in front of Newcastle. They're on 18 points, and you can see why they needed to win tonight. Manly confronts them next weekend, then Canterbury, then Cronulla, and they finish off with Illawarra. That is not a menu that you'd be over excited about as Meninga holds them off with one hand, pushes it with the other. Mandruku finds Croker and a good tackle by Mark Sargent. Croker was uh, near enough to going to score a try. Stewart, Ferner. Then it was meant for Stewart. It was picked up by Pong. They've all got their hands up here. They're pushing each other out of the road to get a touch, really. Meninga taken by Butterfield. Walter for Stewart. He kicks for the regather himself. Barnes knocks on. Stewart will probably score here. Yes, Stewart gets try number four. Well, Canberra absolutely white hot here at Marathon.
and stay together. Yes, it's one-way traffic at the moment. Nathan Barnes, he'd done a good job by getting in the position to read that the little kick was on. But then the simplest task, which was catching the football, just wasn't executed. Oh, Davis was caught in no man's land. Stewart, who took the odds to nothing, got the favourable bounce. Here you'll see Nathan Barnes really should have caught the football. He'd done well to read that Stewart could chip. And that was not a difficult catch. And Ricky Stewart scores the try that takes Canberra now to a 22 points to nil lead. 28 metres in, 18 out, three from three for, for David Ferner. He's got it beautifully between the uprights again. So everything's turning up rosy for Canberra at Marathon. 24 nil after 25 minutes, they're just one below a point a minute. If you're coaching against this Canberra team at the moment, would you just have backline shots at them or would you play some forwards out wide to try and stretch the defence? I think you've got to have backline shots. And one of the things about Canberra is, is when they get you down in your own half, they're very hard to go through because of their compressed defence. The defenders are standing shoulder to shoulder. That being the case, they get more players into tackles and slow your play the balls down, and they're very hard to break the line. They're one of the sides that you have to move the ball to make yards, and then when you get close to their line, probably come a little bit harder back on the inside. Newcastle at the moment are playing right into their hands, and, and as I say, their, fresh, their, their fast players are, are very, very fresh. The Newcastle forwards, who we thought would dominate this game tonight, uh, are being outplayed by the by the Canberra pack, who are just unloading the ball at will. They're really beating them all over the paddock. Steve Walters gets a kick in from dummy half, and uh, typical of the way this match is flowing. He finds 40 metres, and uh, the scrum will go down just outside the 10-metre line. The scary thing for Newcastle is the fact that Canberra have had so many good players, yet Bradley Clyde has probably been fairly quiet out there. He's been reasonably well contained, hasn't featured a great deal in the first 30 minutes. I know that he's done plenty of work, which he always does. We're talking about the Newcastle uh, pack being expected to dominate this game tonight. It leads me to ask the question, conversely, do you think that maybe opposition sides have underestimated the ability of the Canberra pack? They always do. I mean, they game plan for what for what brilliant attack they have out wide, but it's it's the likes of, of Lomax and Pongier and Ferner. I mean, Ferner scored a lot of tries this year. Uh, Bradley Clyde, one of the best back rowers in the game. Uh, they've got a very underrated pack, and the fellow at dummy half is the one who, who takes cheap yards whenever you're waiting for everything else to happen. They've got good options all over the field. Uh, Ricky Stewart, he just brings players on the inside and the outside. The other players set themselves out wide. Yeah, there's another try brewing here. Well, this is Quentin Pongier now, who takes it inside the 20-metre line. I was just looking at the way Stewart is passing the ball. Everything they do is uh, with utmost confidence. Here's Walters looking like Ricky Stewart, and Stewart working one and two players. He, he's selective. One time it'll be the first man, the second time it'll be the other, as he angles them back into the centre of the park, and then they push it wide, and Clyde is with it now, 10 metres out from the line. Very hard to forecast what they're going to do, even though you know the ball is going to go to Stewart all the time. Ferner now on tackle number five. He plays the ball. Walters! Walters from dummy half! Slams the ball down and another try. And I think that's what you were just talking about. Exactly. I mean, all the attention was taken with Ricky Stewart and players coming off him. And this bloke is the best in the business. He's the best hooker forward I've ever seen. And with him at that, they're at dummy half. You've got to pay him the ultimate respect the whole time. Fifth tackle, everyone looking to Ricky Stewart, everyone looking to the kick. Steve Walters just said, OK, I'll just slip up here and get a four-pointer and put this game well without a reach in Newcastle in the danger zone of being embarrassing. Yeah, fifth tackle with a player lying on the ground and one marker for Newcastle. So keen and intent to get to Ricky Stewart that it opened up straight up the middle. Croker leads now for Mullins, 17 and 15 respectively, the try scorers. And Ferner, he converts. Tim Sheens has gone for the peanuts. 30 nil. 30 nil. If you just came home from wherever, the club or the pub or whatever. Canberra leading Newcastle with Steve Walters getting a down for yet another try. Their fifth of the night. This is the first half, isn't it? I think so. John Lomax, Harrigan and Tracy, the two tacklers. Now Quentin Pongia. 
And remember when Pongier and Lomax joined this Canberra side, they had a lot of knockers, plenty of people suggesting they couldn't play, but I don't know whether Tim Shanes would be too, uh, too ready to get rid of either of them right now. This is David Wesley. I think any young forward coming into first grade, Raymond, takes two or three seasons to really get the pace and the strength that he needs to play first grade. Uh, that being the case, I think Pongier and Lomax have done an excellent job in the space of 18 months to be as competitive and as dominant as they have. Uh, we, we give young players four or five years in grade uh, before we expect them to be at their best in first grade. These fellas have done it in 18 months, despite the fact they've come into the Winfield Cup a little older than the normal player. This is McCormack ta taken down 40 yards from his own line. I was just watching this kick by Ricky Stewart, and I'm just wondering uh, whether, in fact, the Canberra player that was next to come in contact with the ball was onside. But it all happened so damn quickly, I don't think anybody was quite sure of what happened. And there were plenty of, uh, plenty of moving bodies around the football. Russell Wire! Russell Wire's inside the 20-meter line, Ricky Stewart! Stewart brings him down, Wire goes again, and that's a double movement. Well, Wire claiming that he wasn't held by Stewart, it was a try saving from the number seven. Went straight over the top of Thulavai. No support there, through the dummy to nobody. Stewart comes in. Well, has he got hold of him? Does he have the right to get up here? I think when you're behind 30 points to nil, you do get up. <laughs> I, I think Russell Wyatt did what everybody would have done, but just trying to explain. This, this is Mullins again. I thought for a moment he's off on another 70 metre rampage. One thing we talked about before the game, Ray, was not only has Ricky Stewart got one of the best kicking and passing games in the league, but he's also so very, very competitive. I mean, he sides 30 nil in front. He's racing across field, making cover tackles as though his life depended on it. Yeah, that's what I said earlier. He's got all the skills. He's the complete rugby league player. And here he is with the football now. And he's taken to ground out there about 31 metres out from the Newcastle line. Lomax with a... A short pass and Brad Clyde 27 meters out from the line we know that Brad Clyde's out there and he's done a lot of work it's just that he hasn't seemed to be doing all that much such as the occasion Mandruku tried to rake it back in field and this is going to be the turnover one thing about Bradley Clyde's game Ray uh, he's had a great combination with Laurie Daly earlier this season. I haven't seen Canberra's last couple of games, but Tim Sheens has encouraged Bradley Clyde to get out wider and play off Laurie Daly, uh, rather than coming in and doing the bullocking in the forwards. Uh, we know that Bradley Clyde's had a lot of injuries in his career, and I guess Tim Sheens is trying to give him an easier path. That being the case, Laurie Daly's absence is probably taking away from Bradley Clyde's involvement a little bit. He's a little bit lost out there, and I think that's why he's, uh, his normal great game is down tonight. This is Paul Harrigan now, 40 metres out from the line, across from Andrew Johns to his brother Matthew, and then it's out even wider and turned back inside for Tracy. Darren Tracy gets a flick pass out for Matthew Johns, and now Robbie O'Davis. Russell Wire offers his services on the inside, but O'Davis is tackled on the halfway line. Back and across for Matthew Johns, a wide ball for Andrew, and then a shorter pass up for Tony Butterfield, who did well. John stays alive, as he always does. A great support player. Inside pass for Nathan Barnes. Not held this time, but short of the line. Last tackle uh, for Nathan Barnes. Jamie Ainsco, the dummy half. He'll be tempted. Goes to the blind side, and that's a try. Scored by Andrew Johns right on half time. Good quick thinking by the dummy half, Jamie Ainsco. And Andrew John, he gets the try at the 38th minute, 30 points to four. It's an example of what we were talking about earlier. Newcastle, for the first time this half, put a spread on the right-hand side of the field and in one sweep of the ball, we're able to get it back to the left-hand side of the field. That moved the Canberra defence around. Once you've got them near your line, then it's an effort to come forward again. Very quick thinking here on the on the dummy half area. Hainsco, read they were short on the blind. Nadruku, a little bit of lack of experience there. And well read by Johns. Nice try. That'll give him just a lift leading on half time and certainly make David Wade a little more comfortable walking to the dressing room. In the last five minutes of the first half, Russell Wire on the extreme right and then Andrew Johns on the extreme left. And look at this kick. Oh, that's a bobby dash from the sideline. Breathing a little bit of hope for the future into Newcastle.
that's how it looked to the touchies. Coming out of the lights of the grandstand, a beautiful kick from the sideline. 30 points to six. Canberra in front and wheeling and dealing. The crowd, there's no doubt in my mind that if they hadn't put a safety limit on the crowd here at Marathon, it would have broken the ground record. Tremendous atmosphere, but a very subdued crowd, understandably, as uh, this green machine leaves the field. They've scored five tries, Brett Mullins in two classic tries. 30 to 6 at half time. Right now, when you switch your home loan to ANZ, you can get $4,000 cash back. Awesome. But what are you doing here? Making an ANZ home loan ad. Cool. That explains the film crew. You can get cash back when you switch your home loan to ANZ. Make Christmas super with the latest super cheap auto catalogue. Get 40% off these Penrite full synthetic 6 litre oils and get 20% off SCA automotive and four wheel drive batteries. Make it super. Super cheap auto. Masculine Fragrance, Phantom by Paco Rabanne. AEG's new 58 volt 8 amp batteries are packed with power. They take the runtime of AEG 58 volt tools to the next level, so you can get the job done. AEG 58 volt commercial garden series, packed with power. Nespresso Virtuo, no barista required. Make your coffee with a double shot from strong lattes to full body cappuccinos and the most exceptional roast and ground coffee. Nespresso. <laughs> because they count on you, count on it. Australia's only 10 year warranty with 10 years cap price servicing. Mitsubishi 1010. You can count on it. How out of control are electricity prices? Well, the cost of living may still be going up, but thanks to Domino's, the cost of pizza ring is still great value. You can get three large pizzas from just $34.99. So don't waste electricity cooking tonight. We'll deliver. Pizza ring is still great value. Order on the Domino's app. G'day. They call me Mr. Cricket. But when KFC Supercoach BBL fires up, I become... Supercoach. That's Mr. Supercoach to you. Australia's hottest new design duo. Gosh, that is pretty cool. Are taking on our inner cities. I can't think of anywhere better for inspiration. Rosie Morley and Patty Milne are using local culture for design inspiration. The history, the atmosphere, it's exactly the experience I want to take back to the apartment. Oh, look at this. Now this is my type of design. New, selling in the city, Wednesdays 8.30 on Lifestyle or Watch On Demand. Welcome back now, the second half. 30 points to six in favour of Canberra. A scintillating first half for them. And David Wesley remains on. As Canberra work it away from inside their own 20 metre line. John Lomax taking the second tackle. And Quentin Pongy of the third as we go to the sidelines for his half-time report, Steve Roach. Yeah, well, firstly, there's no changes to uh, either side. In the Newcastle room, they've got to chase their kicks in a line. They can't go up in uh, numbers because uh, Canberra have got so many good broken field runners. Watch Wallers from dummy half, because invariably, as soon as Wallers makes that yard in the middle, they spread wide and try and slow them down a bit. We must be alive on both sides of the ruck, because Stuart will switch play at any time. Stuart's kick with missile precision finds the line 15 out from the Newcastle line. David Waite probably could have made it a lot simpler by just saying anything with a green jumper on. Be careful. I don't think the outlook for both teams in this second half 
will be different, Ray. I'm sure that Tim Sheens will want his side not to get carried away with the scoreline and to remain disciplined to what they want to do. I'm sure, he wants them to score more points, but not with football. That is, that is not what they've worked on during the week. And this next 40 minutes for Newcastle, really a test of character. This is an interesting passage of play here, and I'm surprised that Annesley hasn't given a penalty. You're probably wondering why. There was a Canberra player, David Wesley, who'd only just got his boots replaced by a trainer. And Annesley ruled that the scrum should pack with Wesley jogging back into position, and then Wesley came in contact with the first tackle. In other words, they had too many backs. The penalty has now gone to Newcastle. And this is the reason why. Not releasing the tackled player. Here's Wesley. He's out in the 5 8 position. If you'll see that, Canberra's got too many backs, according to the rules of rugby league, and Wesley makes the tackle. I'm surprised that Annesley didn't, uh, didn't give a penalty to Newcastle. So here they are, the Knights now, just inside the 40-metre line. Centre of the ground. Trailing by 24 points. And this is Adam Muir. McCormick then, in the dummy half, and they come to the blind side for Glanville. And Mark Glanville making a few metres, the Canberra defence. Always very tight because of... Uh, the fact that it's always compressed, they go wide, Ains go, he came back in field, then he wanted to go out, but by that time the winger had gone, and now the zest has gone out of the attack. Harrigan still might make an impact, he stands and unloads, McCormick back, and this is Butterfield. The last tackle, the Knights with the player down injured, Matthew Johns, his brother will score, Andrew gets the try! second half and exactly the kind of start Newcastle needed we saw that move in the first half that didn't come up with a try but this one has and let's just have a look where the chaser is well it's a line ball decision a touch of offside there but no Canberra players there because of the ability of Matthew Johns to kick the ball in a different direction to which he was running lovely little kick the last place the Canberra players expected the football to be put. Everybody except Andrew Johns thought that it was going the other way. So Andrew Johns, who scored that try just before half time, scores another try just after half time, and this one he converts as well. A bit of respectability back on the scoreboard. 30 points to 12 in favour of the Raiders. Four minutes gone, second half. All of a sudden, buoyed by that, their defence is up stronger. They're running harder with the ball. The crowd's on their feet. I mean, they're hoping that they're hoping for a comeback. And Newcastle have just got to keep moving the ball around to get back on the board again. Well, uh, a try's given them a tremendous lift. That's the psychological battle, isn't it? If there can be another converted try from Newcastle, they start to get an idea that they can come back and win this game. All of a sudden, Canberra start to question the fact that they've, they've led by so many. That's been whittled away. They start to have a few self-doubts. Mm -hmm. McCormick then comes away from dummy half. He's put down 28 metres out from the Canberra line. They're in the centre of the park. And the, the Knights, with Matthew Johns trying to make an opening for Adam Muir, it was. Matthew Johns again now, on a fairly wide blindside. He just rolls it into the corner, and Fuldervai is able oh, to make a break. Again. In fact, more than a break. He's down to the halfway. Look at Harrigan's chase. Oh, that's a great play in the game. That is a super play. The front rower ran the Canberra winger down. Stewart across now. And on from Croker to Meninga. Ainsko pitching a ride on the Australian captain. Who will make his fourth kangaroo tour. God willing, that is, at the end of the year. Pongia turns it out the back. A groan from the crowd as Mandruku handles and likewise Lomax. Steve Walters to dummy half. Mullins is lurking behind the play of the ball. Furner's there, gives him the football. Here goes Mullins again. Ah, oh, Mullins! Mullins gets his third try and 16 for the year. Well, right. We're all just up here shaking our heads because that again has come from nothing. 
Nice work on the the inside play there. But Mullins again, once he got into open spaces, the acceleration is just unbelievable. Good work there. Good ball from David Ferner. One missed tackle. And then Robbie o. Davis stood up by his opponent and under the post for the third try. It's at 10 in three games now. The inside pass attracted two players, David Ferner. Did a good job. Funny part about it, Tim Sheridan was looking for some footage of Mullins for a story that he's doing in the next couple of weeks on Sports Sunday. <laughs> he said, could you get some nice ISO shots of him maybe scoring a try or two? Get you some shots, Tim. We've got your mile of it. It's a good sign for the young fullback too, learning his trade. I mean, he's had a taste of Australian football this year at the highest level at fullback. Not only the ability to come into the back line, which we've seen so often, he's two long blitzes tries tonight, but to support forwards uh, is another string in the bow of a good fullback. David Ferner from right in front. Five out of five. And a pretty easy night in the office for David Ferner, and he gets it up to six out of six now. And Canberra, they answer Newcastle. 36 points to 12. Newcastle working the scrum. 15 out from their line. And they keep it in the scrum. Hoping to draw a penalty from Canberra's backs. And they make a knock on of it, and Canberra... They've got the ability to hurt Newcastle again if they can get a quick play of the ball. Ruben Wicke stands, has a look at the marker. That only wasted time. Quentin Pongia slams himself into the defence with the sound of the whistle from Annesley. There's well, some frustration coming out here. Ruben Wicke copped a pretty good one from Jamie Ainsco. That's why Ricky was appealing to the referee. It was the previous ruck. It's going to result in a penalty now. Let's have a look. There's a swinging arm here. There. On the far side, the right hand arm coming around. And Wiki, well, he objected. In fact, it's going to be a scrum. That's the only decision the referee deems to be worthy of that incident. Surprised it wasn't a penalty. Good front on tackle there by the man we're talking about, Ruben Wiki. His tackle on Russell Wire. Ainsco. Fires off a pass, long and wide for Nathan Barnes. He's 28 metres out from his own line. 36 to 12 in favour of Canberra. As Mark Glanville is put away by Jason Croker and Quentin Pongia. Paul Harrigan. Lomax and Pongia making the tackle jointly as it comes across and the Johns brothers have handled and beautiful hands by Robbie o Davis as they were inside from Andrew Johns and now referee Annesley has picked up a forward pass and I think you'll find rightly so just wonder whether a Canberra player did actually get a touch here beautiful hands here on a couple of occasions this pick up from Robbie o Davis was great stuff I thought it might have been touched by the Canberra tackler Ruben Wickey be a couple of coaches sitting at home tonight leading up to the semi-finals Peter who'll be watching this game with interest uh, no doubt the result is beyond doubt now with Canberra having a handy lead but Newcastle have shown a few times they've spread the ball there are easy yards out wide uh, probably coming out of trouble that long ball to get your, your players outside the Canberra compressed defence is one way of clearing your own danger zone uh, that won't be lost on opposition fours leading up to semi-final football well, they'll still be sitting there with some trepidation <laughs> I might see something for down the track it's Canberra win this scrum. Inside run from Wicky straight through. Wicky over the halfway line and pulled down 10 metres into Newcastle's area. Davis and Marquette required to make the tackle. Hetherington is back on. I note that David Boyle is out there as well. Mullins up in the line. Shovels the ball back for Jason Croker. Mullins just one behind him now. As the leading try scorers. David Wesley thinks about turning it inside. Then looks outside. Quentin Pongi are just a little bit slow to react. They're on the 20-metre line, though. Walters away for Stewart. He lets two decoys go. And then David Boyle. Jamie Ainsco wrestles with him, and eventually they bring him to a halt. Eight metres out from the line. Stewart is calling it to the left. And here he is with... No, he's not. In fact, a bad pass. Steve Walters finished up with it. He's able to get it back. Mullins steps and turns it. The ball goes to ground. Stewart... Knocked out of the game, and Ainsco comes up with it for Newcastle. O'Davis. 
Back on his own 20 metre line. This is Brad Godden now. And Newcastle try to slog it down into a respectable part of the ground for them to launch an attack. Paul Harrigan. We showed you earlier the remaining games for Newcastle. Let's just have a look and see what Canberra's got coming up for them in just a moment. Five tackles gone for the, the Knights as McCormack goes across to the left and then Matthew Johns kicks, but it's a it's a shocker, really, as Fatty would say. And Noah Mandruku comes back and uh, he's in midair when tackled. Glanville actually clutched him out of midair. Flying Fijian. And that's what Canberra's got to come. And that match next Friday night will be one of the season's highlights against Canterbury. Then they play Illawarra, then Western Suburbs, and they finish with a great game at Brookvale against Manly. And it may well be a grand final dress rehearsal. It may well be a game that decides the top three as well, Ray. I think that would be the case, and that's going to be very important. Clyde turning it back inside. Mullins looks on his inside for support. Five tackles gone. Steve Walters hears the call, but there's a knock on a dummy half from the Australian hooker. He's actually claimed there Brett Mullins lost control of the football in attempting to play it. Four points the difference. The problem for Newcastle now is that they've got to look for the miracle play all the time. They're that far behind, and that's one of them. Kicking on the first tackle from the scrum. Good chase here. It is a good chase. Phil Levi was leading that chase, but eventually the ball beats them all over the sideline. 30 metres away from the Canberra line. That's where the scrum will pack. Not a great deal of urgency there from Canberra. It wasn't necessary. Well, the first bounce went, to get, went against the Newcastle Chasers and straight towards the sideline. Fuller by really not the quickest man out there, and there were three Newcastle Knights in hot pursuit. The bounce of the ball hasn't favoured Newcastle tonight, and that was just one of those occasions. Fulavai coming off the left wing. 35 metres out from his own line, across for Stewart, and then it's on for Wicky. Mullins is coming around on the inside, gets the reverse pass from Mandruku. He goes inside, and Mandruku is ankle tap, gets a pass away, and now it's Jason Croker. Croker goes for the corner, and he's pulled down. Dummy half is Mal Meninga. They push it hard left, and it's Stewart. Stewart ring by the Newcastle defence. 10 metres out from the line. And the danger flag is up again. Hetherington blindside. Look at the numbers. Ah, oh, great hands, Nandruko. Noah gets a try. Nandruko gets the seventh try of the night for Canberra. Tremendous vision here by uh, Australian captain Mel Meninga. Canberra were lined out deep to the left. There was a short blindside on. And Meninga was able to demand the ball and put his supports away. Uh, Newcastle had fanned out deep to the right in defence to, to accommodate the Canberra spread. And you'll see here when the play comes back, this is the, the croaker burst down the sideline. The ball will come back to Stewart. He's tackled. You can see where Newcastle put all their defence on the right-hand side of the field. Mel Meninga read it and got numbers on, uh, on the other side. Newcastle found short. Two magic pieces of play there from Noah Nandruka. Firstly, the initial bust when he threw the ball to a support player off the ground. And secondly, needed good hands to catch that one. The pass was behind the player. He was at speed. It's important in a side like Canberra that they've got players that are willing to take it upon themselves when opportunities present themselves. Stewart then from way out there and just grazes the uprights. A little bit of a reminder to the Australian selectors that I can kick goals as well. Not so that time, but 61 minutes of the match gone and the Raiders 40, Newcastle 12. Played by Tracy, worked away by McCormick into the hands of Andrew Johns and then his brother Matthew and now Harrigan. Harrigan is taken by Ruben Wickey. Eventually, he's put down. Ten metres out from the line. Fifth tackle. Andrew Johns. Dummies inside for Davis. Kicks outside. A chance. Oh, Nandruku did well. I know Meninga's come down with the football, but Nandruku, he went from a standing start. Meninga is saying, what's going on here? Annesley has paid the mark. 
if I can use an Australian rules term, he's paid the mark by Nandruku and refused to accept a knock-on in goal from Mal Meninga. Or, in fact, he's gone the other way now, I know. He's put the line dropout on. I thought they'd come back out to the 20-metre line for the restart, but he went the other way and the way that I'm pretty sure he had to go. Marquette. 31 metres out from the Canberra line. This is Glanville. Back and away for McCormick. McCormick does the, does the razzle-dazzle. And now Canberra comes up with it. Rugby league is different to Australian rules. In rugby league, you've got to catch the football for it to be a mark. <laughs> Thank you, Sterling. Mullins playing it now. Ten metres out from his own line. Talking of Australian rules, this fellow, I didn't realise until I was reading his bios today, he comes from Cull Cairn, which is down towards the border, Albury Way, and very much Australian rules territory. Quentin Pong here. Steve Walters. Scored his usual try. In fact, he's got himself up to eight tries for the year. Steve Walters, as Stewart puts it back behind Robbie O'Davis. Meninga, an enthusiastic performance by Meninga. He hasn't probably had to do all that much, but... When there's been a kick, he's invariably led the chase. It's been a match that really Brett Mullins has devoured. Robbie O'David. It will also be an important match in the careers of both the Joms boys. The plenty wraps this year, their first year in the top grade, and they've been outstanding. But they'll learn from this. Real pressure situation for them. I think they've handled it pretty well. Zanes go, finds Barnes. Oh, up with the look drop what's ball. happened here. Mandruku now. He tries to beat Ainsco he put the Neville Glover on him a couple of times too there I see and played by Glover. Neville you can't touch that one Pong here the Neville Glover Brett Etherington <laughs> Stewart now showing it for Mullins and saying hang on a moment you've had enough of it David Kim pays you to be dirty on that. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Doug. You might as well get on the bandwagon. They're all on it. Nandruku now. Thank God that is not it. You'll have me on the skewer in a moment. Walters stands and pushes it across for Nandruku. Then back for Meninga. Well, Newcastle just refusing to... Well, they have now. They've managed to get him down, but... They've got to tie the football up. Stewart. Well, they're trying everything. A wide kick for Full of Eye. Oh, Davis did well. I'm watching Annesley. Newcastle comes up with it and they get the penalty. I think you'll find that he's penalised for tackling oh, Davis without the football. I'm keen to have a look at this one again. It was a well placed kick. There's Full of Eye. I think he thought that Robbie Davis was going to catch the football, was committed to the tackle, but a good decision in the end. Russell Wire running the line 30 metres out from his own line. And uh, the skipper, Mal Meninga, given a rest by his coach, Tim Sheen. His last visit to Marathon Stadium, Mal Meninga, brings a rousing reception. Harrigan plays it for McCormick to give. Andrew Johns on for Matthew, and then a forward pass. Annesley has got it. Much to the dismay of Paul Marquette in 41. Just looking again, Ray, I know he's come up with a forward pass, and the game is beyond doubt, but other coaches will be looking at the fringes of the ruck there on Canberra. They defend very tight in defence. If you can put some numbers out on the ends and run at the holes, uh, you can cause them some problems. Tim Jeans will be ruining the day we brought you onto this commentary team. Paddy might be too. Paddy who? Mandruku across the top, and it's with Croker. He's over the halfway. And pulled down by Darren Tracy, a good chase by the second rower. Mandruku to dummy half. 
Where do you put Jason Croker when Laurie Daly comes back? Probably the wing. But what if Nagus comes back in time? Then what do you do? Hetherington now, 25 metres out from the Newcastle line. Just wondering what the latest is on Ken Nagus as Stewart Moore shows it and then very, very fanciful stuff. It's with Croker now. Away from uh, David Boyle and then back for him and he's off for the corner, Boyle. There's uh, somebody on his inside, touched by Newcastle. Canberra's come up with the football and Annesley has restarted the tackle count. Played by Quentin Tong here, I do believe. Across the line for Stewart, look at this pass from Stewart. Beautifully directed for Wiki to get his second try. What an absolute gem. It must be a joy to be an outside back with this Canberra team. The service they get from their inside men just creates so many opportunities. Good ball there, cutting out David Ferner. Opened it up for David Boyle. Pass, it's touched by Paul Harrigan. Steve Walters comes and cleans up. Nearly knocks on there. Only just kept the football under control. And there, Ricky Stewart. He has a look. He sees what's on out wide. Almost an intercept there by Russell Wire, but Ruben Wickey, once he caught it, open spaces. The eighth try of the night, and watch this pass. He cuts out three Newcastle defencemen with a pass that probably travelled 30 metres. This year is the best we've seen Ricky Stewart play. And my opinion is that he should be in the test side, but you know, Langer will do a great job as well. And the kick now from almost the sideline by David Ferner keeps his record intact. 46 points to 12, another version of a classic Canberra try laid on again by a classic footballer. You see in Rugby League Week where the players, 3-1, to one, suggested that he should be in the Australian side. That doesn't come as a great shock. But uh, as I've said so many times in the past, isn't it incredible the number of players that have come through when you've got a champion in front of you and you've had to play second fiddle. Again, Ray, talking of all the skills, it's not just confined to Ricky Stewart in this Canberra team. The, the, the thing that puts this team above many others in the competition is that all their players can use the football. It doesn't matter whether they've got number one on their back or number eight on their back. All through the, the whole side, they're all capable and skillful with the ball. And while all these players are scoring tries, there's uh, this engine room that... Uh, I mentioned earlier has so often been put down by by opponents of Canberra and I'm just about to make the comment John Lomax my goodness hasn't he progressed as a, a rugby league player Stewart now going back and around and then kicking and taking the chase down the ground he's put everybody on side Nathan Barnes had to press the emergency button and Druku wraps him up some help from David Boyle but the enthusiasm it's, it's just Growing, you'd think it'd be dropping off from Canberra, but I was just looking at Stewart when he kicked down the ground. He, with great urgency, took off to put everybody on side. Yeah, and I'm we're six minutes from full time. I've also got to give a rap to his opponent too. I, I'm enormous fans of, of both Andrew and Matthew Johns, and they've they've tried everything out there tonight. There's a knock on there, from Mark Sargent. Just about shows what kind of night they've had. Robbie Davis leaves the field. He must have nightmares. The amount of players that have been pouring through on him in this particular game. But on the Johns boys, uh, as I said earlier, they'll learn plenty from this game and they can hold their heads up. They've really, they've worked hard, they've tried hard. And they've tried to engineer things when they knew that the game was well and truly gone. Robbie Ross has gone on for Newcastle. He's a reserve grade fullback. And Jason Deeth is on there now for, for Steve Walters. 30 metres out from the, the Newcastle line, 46 points to 12 in favour of uh, the Canberra Raiders. Stewart flicks inside and Lomax provides it for Jason Deeth. And he came on in a match the other day and I think he scored three tries, Jason Deeth. Lomax again showing some of his skills. Not held, no hand placed on the fallen player. This is Deeth now. Wesley to the blind side. Croker's pass inside. Mullins is there looking for four. Put it down. Try number four for Russell Mullins. And he draws level with the...
the leading try scorer of the year, Jason Croker. I think Russell Mullins would be very happy Did about I that. Did I say Russell? <laughs> Jeez, that did confuse me. He does get plenty of runs. So does Bill every now and then. But this one's Brett. And again, it was the, the pass before that really set things up. It put the Newcastle defence in two minds. Again, it was Hetherington who drew the Newcastle defender, didn't get the football, and, and the change of pace there again was outstanding. Robbie Ross had no chance. But things were opened up beautifully by the sleight of hand and the running off the football by this Canberra team. You see the gap opens up. He still had work to do, but... He just does it with consummate ease, and that's the beauty of the fullback. David Ferner, seven from seven. This is David, not Don. <laughs> yeah, Russell Mullins is having a field day. Yeah, it's all right. Ferner from the interception of the 10 and the 20, and he's having a great night. 52 to 12, and though he's kicked... Eight from eight. That has also been swallowed up by Brett Mullins and his four try offering tonight. That's try number 17 for the year. Not only speed, Ray, but great footwork. You can see there he has still had a lot to do when he got the ball, uh, but was just able to wind his array around the defender and made it look very, very easy. Great speed and great evasion. And David Boyle playing it now, 10 metres from the halfway mark as Canberra bring it back through Hetherington, not put down, and back for Jason Deeth. And uh, he's rounded up on the halfway line. It'd be remiss of me if I didn't send some words of encouragement to a man who's been great, not only to the Parramatta Club, but to Rugby League generally. A fellow by the name of Joe Joseph, who is uh, keeping a bedside vigil alongside his very sick wife at the moment at uh, Westmead Hospital. And to you, big fella, uh, and to Arva, uh, just keep the chins up. That's that's the message from everybody in rugby league that you people have come in contact with. Yeah, contact with plenty of people, almost a second father to me. I you know that uh, Joe will get through this. I wish him all the best. Played by Matthew Johns then, the dying seconds of the game, across through Glanville, then to Andrew Johns. Ross comes in from the back. Ainsco looking to offer him an angle, and then it's back to Sergeant. And uh, the big Newcastle captain is down, 23 metres out from the Canberra line. We're just rolling down the hill now, a matter of 40 seconds to go before the siren will bring a merciful ending to the game. I'm sure from the Newcastle point of view, as Ainsco gets over the line to put it down, Newcastle get their third try. Almost in the, the strains of the siren. 52 points to 16, the try coming 30 seconds from full time, and this is how it happened. Just numbers on the blind side there enabled it to open up. Ainsco throwing the dummy. Croker went to his man on the outside. Canberra players, they hadn't come across. A little bit disappointed for Tim Sheens. They wouldn't want to finish that way. Both halves ending with Newcastle tries. Here's Andrew Johns from a fairly wide angle, and he misses that final conversion attempt. And so Canberra, they win by this huge margin, 52 points to 16.